In the Panama Canal, there's increasingly less water and more and more ships can't get from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, causing huge problems for global trade. But excuse me, how is it possible that there's no water? It's simple, the canal is almost entirely above sea level and operates through a system of locks and elevation steps which rely on the pumping and release of fresh water. A lengthy period of extreme drought, however, is disrupting the whole mechanism. Today we're going to look at what's happening and what the possible solutions are. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Drought is creating huge problems for the Panama Canal, one of the greatest engineering works ever built. This man-made waterway cuts through the American continent, allowing ships to travel from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and vice versa without circumnavigating South America. The canal was completed in 1914, expanded in 2016, and is almost 82 kilometers in length. Now the crazy thing is that it's not flat, it's not at sea level for its entire length, on the contrary, it follows the contour of the land it is built on for the most part, climbing up inland to an elevation of over 26 meters and dropping down to sea level at the coast on both the Atlantic and Pacific sides of the country. So how do ships navigate from one side to the other if the Panama Canal is above sea level? We actually made a special video to explain it, I recommend you check it out, but in a nutshell, to allow ships to move up and down in altitude, a system of three locks was designed. The system enables vessels to overcome a series of differences in elevation by pumping in and then releasing out fresh water. To accomplish this, however, obviously there must be an adequate supply of fresh water, and that water is sourced from a number of lakes and watercourses in the vicinity. Well, in recent years and months, the drought has caused such a shortage of water that authorities have had to reduce the number of ships using the canal. Just so we're clear, we're talking about going from an average of 36 ships a day down to 24, and this number will drop further to 18 in February. That's 50% fewer ships. Also, a tighter limit has been imposed regarding a ship's draft, which is the distance between the waterline and the bottom of the hull. Why? Because the water level in the canal is lower and there is the risk that vessels will run aground. All this has created major delays for numerous shipping companies, particularly for bulk carriers, which are those that do not use containers to transport goods. Consequently, this has led to an increase in transportation costs, which in some cases have more than doubled. Of course that's the case. If we consider crew salaries, fuel usage, and penalties for delivery delays, it's inevitable that costs will increase. As you can imagine, the situation has had a substantial impact on world trade. The Panama Canal, in fact, is one of the so-called choke points of our planet, meaning it is one of the few almost mandatory passages between seas and oceans that ships have to go through to get from one corner of the globe to another. Specifically, about 5% of the world's maritime trade travels along the Panama Canal, especially goods coming to and from the United States. It is not by chance that America has a treaty which gives it the right to defend the canal from any threat to its accessibility and functioning. So it's apparent that if the drought worsens, making it too costly or even technically impossible to navigate the canal, alternative solutions would need to be found, some of which could potentially disrupt economic and geopolitical balances that have remained unchanged for decades. This is another example of how critical choke points are and the fragility of our supply chains, our trade. We learned something about it in 2021, you'll surely recall, when the Taiwanese ship, the Ever Given, ran aground in the Suez Canal and was stuck there for six days, delaying 400 other vessels and disrupting trade between Europe and Asia. In these cases, local issues also come into play. Just imagine, the passage of just one ship from one ocean to the other along the Panama Canal is estimated to consume as much water as 500,000 Panamanians use in one day. So the use of resources for the operation of the infrastructure conflicts with the needs of the local citizens, more than half of whom get their water from the same sources that feed the Panama Canal. On the other hand, though, the reduction in the number of ships passing through the canal or the absence of passages is costing the Panamanian government millions of dollars 
and this could increasingly be the case, seriously hurting the country's economy and consequently its residents as well. You see, revenue from Panama Canal tolls constitutes approximately 6% of the country's gross domestic product. So, as you can see, it's a super complicated situation and there are lots of pros and cons either way. Now, what brought about this drought, this current water shortage? In theory, Panama has an equatorial climate, so it should have abundant rainfall, but in 2023, the amount of rain decreased by about 40%, mainly as a result of a cyclical climate phenomenon called El Nino, which caused the Central American country to experience an increase in average temperatures and a reduction in precipitation. So yes, it's a rather particular phase, but the scientific community has noticed a broader trend caused by global warming and therefore climate change. Periods of drought are going to get longer and more intense and there's going to be a progressive decrease in the water levels of the reservoirs supplying Panama and its canal. Finally, let's move on to the potential solutions to the problem. First of all, the Panamanian government is considering building a new reservoir along the Indio River to capture additional rainwater and channel it into the canal. It could consequently increase daily traffic by approximately 12 to 15 vessels. This option, however, would necessitate a huge financial and engineering effort. I mean, we're talking about a project that would cost at least $900 million and also cause significant environmental and social damage. Many people would actually need to abandon their houses and villages, which would be flooded to create the new reservoir. Plus, the new reservoir would be built on an area that's currently protected. Finally, the problem of the global warming-related climatic trend remains. The drought is only going to get worse. The most immediate alternative would be to take a different route, but that would involve increases in travel times, costs, and even greenhouse gas emissions. For instance, we could go back to sailing all the way around South America, or Asian countries could trade with the east coast of the U.S. by taking the route that goes through the Suez Canal and the Mediterranean Sea, which, though, is currently problematic due to the conflict in the Middle East. Alternatively, goods could be shipped to the west coast of the U.S. and from there transported by train or truck. Or we might even see new land routes emerge, ones that cut cross countries like Colombia or places like Mexico and Nicaragua, which have coasts on both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Lastly, let's not forget that global warming could gradually open up the Arctic route in the far north of the planet, which would totally revolutionize global trade. Guys, I hope you liked this video on the Panama Canal. Thanks for watching. See you for the next video, always here on Geopop Everyday Science. Ciao!